Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you the Canvas Gradebook. All right. So I will have more information on Power Teacher Pro Gradebook and connecting to Canvas in the near future, really when the school year ends and we can begin tinkering and setting up those connections officially because we'll have active 23, 24 school year students in the platform. All right. So what I'm going to show you right now is just the Canvas Gradebook and why even though there you have Power Teacher Pro Gradebook, it is still a very helpful resource to use. So anytime you provide feedback to students, uh, they get notifications. So that's one way for students to keep track of their grades, but it's always really easy for a teacher to get whole class data and get a snapshot of student performance using the Canvas Gradebook. So if I go into a Canvas course, I'm going to toggle back and forth between my elementary Canvas view and my secondary Canvas view. So if I'm in elementary Canvas view, I'm going to click Manage Subject, and then I'll go to Grades. All right, and it takes me to this view. I'm going to get the same thing in secondary, just slightly smaller font. So if I go to my secondary course here, this is like a social studies course I have set up. If I don't see those menus, I'll click the three line button and I'm going to go over here and click grades. All right. And when that loads, I am officially in the Canvas gradebook. The other way that you can also open the Canvas gradebook is if you are grading an assignment in Canvas and you have speed grader open, there's a little icon in the top left corner of an assignment when you're in speed grader view that takes you directly to this view. So that's another way you can get there. Um, but if I am on my gradebook view here, it's going to show all of the students in my course. And there are so many helpful things to notice here. So this is a fake course with fake students we use for training purposes. So that's why there's a lot of missing assignments here. But it shows all of my assignments. If there are ones that I've built out that aren't published for students, so it means they don't have access to them, it just grays it out and doesn't necessarily show that as a missing assignment because they don't have access to it. So here I see all of my student names. If I scroll over, I can see some of the scores and things that are there. I can see their performance on these. And I think a little bit further down, I actually do have some scores. All right, so I can see how they've done. So see here, Nick has turned in some things. He's done okay. Just shows me totals. Uh, if I wanna narrow this down even further and see some of these pieces, I have lots of options on this screen. I can jump to an individual assignment if I click its name. Um, I can open speed grader from here if I hover over the assignment. And this is where you have some awesome features as well. So for any assignment, I have options for messaging my students. I also have options for curving grades. I can hide grades to the assignment if I'm not quite ready for those to be visible to people yet. I can enter grades in a different way if I want to do percentage instead of points. And for grade posting policy, that basically gives me a view here where as soon as I start entering grades, it's going to make those visible to students, where if I do manually, which is not the default, then I decide when students get those grades. So that's just personal preference for you and when you like to do that. Um, so when I click an assignment, like what we have right here, this quiz, what I can do here is send a message to students who... So if I open this view, this is amazing. I can send a message to students like those maybe who haven't submitted this assignment yet. So I can send it to those who submitted, who I haven't graded yet to let them know like, hey, I'm sorry, I haven't graded it yet. I'm still working on it. Who scored a certain thing or who scored less than. So if I want to send them some additional review, I can or some extension activities I could. For those I reassigned this to, I can submit, I can send them a little note as well. So I said, hey, I'm going to give you another attempt to do this. It is open for you to go and do that as well. And if I can show all the recipients as well, so if I want to individually send it to students, I can. But this is a really good way to send it to students who maybe need that additional reminder to submit this assignment. And again, I still have the options here of typing out a response. I can add an attachment like a study guide, and I can record audio and video. So that's really powerful. You can message all the students with missing assignments right from this view. And I was talking with another teacher who she'd like to use that feature to send it to students who had submitted the assignment. So um, went through and saw the number of students who had submitted it and sent them a note and said, hey, awesome job, thank you for turning that in on time. So it can be something that is you know, a reminder, but also some positive reinforcement for students as well. Okay, so that's one helpful thing. And you have that anytime you hover over the assignment, it's just a little three dot button. You can sort things as well. So if I wanna do a, a view here of all of the students who have it missing, 
I can sort it by them. If I want to sort it by low to high grades or high to low, I can do that as well. You have total flexibility in this view here in filtering. If I want, I can search for individual student names here. I can type individual assignments. So if I only want to see scores on this quiz, I can filter to only that view. I can do even multiple assignments as well. Um, I can, you know, search for an individual student if I want. Just view his performance. Uh, I can clear that out. Lots and lots of flexibility here. There's keyboard shortcuts that are over here with this little view and the little settings button just opens some of your policies for grades as well. So I would just say that if you don't want your grades to be automatically posted, you can toggle that. But late policies, again, are up to you on how you want to change some of those pieces. So if I want to see even more student performance here, the gradebook view, uh, you can move it to individual gradebook as well. We're on gradebook history right now. And that just shows tons and tons of performance here. Gradebook history, sorry, we were on gradebook view. If I toggle to gradebook history, which I just did, this shows everything that I've been grading. That might necessarily be super helpful for you as the teacher. And to get back into the view, I can click gradebook. But that just shows basically your, your breadcrumb trail and what you've been doing. If I want to see individual gradebook view for students, I can. My view button here, again, just allows me more filters on how I want to do this. Um, I can show basically students who have completed this, their performance, modules they've been working on, lots and lots of options. Actions is where you would sync this to Power Teacher Pro Gradebook when we have that set up finalized. So that is where you can do that. Um, but that can also be something that you schedule in your course to happen at a certain time of day if you want as well. So more information on that in the future. If I want to see individual student performance, if I click a student's name, this is pretty cool. You get some nice graphics and data about this student. So if I click his name, I can send him a message right now and say, hey, you've been doing great, or hey, you have a few missing assignments I want you to follow up on. Um, it gives me a little snapshot here on how they've done their last few assignments. They're a little bit of information on their page views, participation, and participation is going to be discussions. And we don't really have any of those in this course. If I click on grades, it's going to move into an individual gradebook view for this particular student, which is this is actually the same view that the students have when they view their individual gradebook. So it shows all of their information here. Um, I can look at some of their performance. And if I click this, it shows how they did in terms of how they stacked up to other students. Um, it's a really, really awesome option here for, for you to look at as well. You can even print this screen too. So if I go back to my grade book, by just clicking the grades button or doing my back button like what I just did, that is one really helpful thing to know is if you click the student name, you can open up the individual grade book and have a conversation with them from there. The other thing I'll point out is you can get individual student analytics from this page too. Technically, you can get to this from the people menu in your course as well. But if I am here, this just gives me some data on how the student has been doing. I can toggle to different students from this view or from the arrows. I can view a uh, table view that shows some of the, the things they've been looking at, the number of views and when. I can see submissions when they've been turning those in. How it even color codes it based on how the scores have been going on that. And then it shows their grades on a chart here as well. So. That is just some data there and individual student performance. And again, I can message the student from here as well to see, you know, check in, see how they're doing and send them a few reminders. And that's just in analytics, which you can also get to from a couple other places in your course, from your settings button in your course, from clicking on the people button in your course. There's several ways you can get to analytics and I'll show you that really quickly. But if I click settings in a course, I can get to some of my data and analytics there as well. If I click course stats, it shows me some of my analytics there. Um, but I can also get to it from the people menu and clicking on the individual student names and also from the grades view. All right. So if I go back to my grade book. The last thing I want to show you is just toggling into individual grade book. Again, this is basically the view that we were just in. Um, but if I do individual view, 
I can select a specific section. So middle school and high school teachers, this is probably more applicable to you, but also our elementary specials teachers. If you want to sort this by the different class periods or mods, you have students or by different teacher names. I have some options here on how I can do this. I prefer like that grade book view that we were just in, but this allows you to sort assignments. You can download, um, you can look at certain content in your course here. This is just another way of viewing that data. Um, but I personally like gradebook view the most because I like the tables and charts and things that it creates from this view. But that is just my personal preference. All right. So that is the Canvas gradebook. And again, there's a lot that you can learn on this and we'll have even more training on this in the future, but I wanted to give you a brief overview lay of the land for our upcoming training day so you can get familiar with this and dive in. And I hope you find this to be a very powerful tool in supporting your students in Canvas. In elementary, it is the same for you. Uh, if I toggle over here, same thing here. I can see all my student performance. I can click a student's name. Um, we don't have a whole lot of things in this course right now, so that's why there's not nearly as much data for this user. But if I click, again, here's an example of someone who's been in here. I can send them a message. I can click this assignment here, message students who, all of the same things that we just did in the other view. Just slightly different font size uh, and everything else is the same. So if you have questions, let me know and thank you.